Hello there! So today is round three and we are playing against Turkey. So yesterday unfortunately we lost and I also lost my game but it was a great experience and today we are going to fight uh, again and I'm playing on board four again and I'm so excited. I'm so excited for my game and I as you can see I changed my clothes um, you're not a chess player if you don't change your clothes after a loss that's the law and we're going next uh, wish me luck and I hope to come back with good news we're back with another recap so I am recording this a day later because yesterday was round three and I was exhausted after my game. The game lasted for five hours and I was pretty tired. I immediately went to dinner and then the rest of the evening I was just resting. So I finally got the opportunity to record now as today I'm resting. Uh, but let's first talk about yesterday's game. So yesterday we played against Turkey and I faced Hayale Iskenderova. And she is pretty strong. She is pretty inactive. She wasn't playing for five years, but started playing recently again. So she dropped a bit of rating, but she is pretty strong. And before the game, I was aware that she's tactically really strong and she can make very crazy tactics. So I had to be careful of those, not to allow any tactical opportunity. Uh, but at the same time, um, yeah, I'm higher rated. So of course I hope to win this game. So let's talk about the game itself. So she always plays e4, almost always, but sometimes she tends to play the move d4 on the first move. And uh, my coach was certain that um, she would play e4 in the first move, but when I checked her games, I realized that, wait a second, she is also playing the French with the black pieces, which is e4, e6. So, um, I told coach that, okay, if I, if she sees that I'm playing the French, she may switch to d4 instead. So then he was like, hmm, good point, let's take a look. So then he saw that, okay, well, your opponent doesn't really play the greatest lines. He was not really impressed by the lines she's playing in d4, which is exactly what happened in the game. Let me show you. So d4, d5, knight f6, bishop d3. So this is very similar to the London setup, but instead of having the bishop on f4, the bishop is staying on c1, um, which is just not great at all. The bishop is supposed to be out of the pawn chain, but now it's stuck in there and it's unclear why. So I play knight c6, simply developing, she plays f4. So here we are in a sort of stonewall setup and that is the idea behind not putting the bishop on f4, but whether that's worth it, as you can see, the evaluation is in black's favor. So it's not supposed to be any good for white, but let's see what happens. So bishop g4 is what I played, knight of three, simply developing, here e6. So now my bishop is out of the chain. And the only thing I need to be careful with is to not get my bishop trapped. So she played short castle, bishop d6, h3, bishop h5. And up until this point, I had it checked with engine. I analyzed it until here because I, first of all, didn't think she would play it. And second of all, I thought just in case if she plays this, okay, I know what to do in the first few moves. And then after that, I'll figure it out on the board. So this is what happened. And she played knight bd2. And here I played move a6. And it looks a little bit odd because why not simply finish developing? Well, at this point, I was not really sure where to put my pieces anymore because all my light pieces uh, are out and I didn't know where to castle yet. Do I go short castle, maybe long castle? I've seen games where they go long castle here. Do I maybe put my queen on e7 or c7? I was not entirely sure. So I was considering to capture it here. And the reason why I didn't capture is because I was not ready for it. So the reason why capturing is interesting is because after e takes d4, the pawn on f4 is dropping. So that's not good. The knight is pinned, so the knight can capture over here. And after pawn takes uh, with the c pawn, if I play knight before, then I face a check, and which is what I wanted to prevent. So that's why I played the move a6. So she plays queen e1, getting out of the pin. So now it was a time for me to take on d4. Knight takes d4 was split, which was a little surprising to me because now her pawn structure is pretty vulnerable. It looks a little bit odd with the pawns over here. The pawn on e3 feels backwards. So. Yeah, I call this opening a success pretty much. So here, queen c7 is what I played, but here I started to crumble. So here I took with the pawn 
uh, and not with the queen because I thought I had to keep looking at the, the pawn on f4 of the bishop and queen lined up. So I played b takes c6 um, to prevent e4 so that after e4 I just take. However, um, even though I thought that e4 is not a move, she plays it. <laughs> and when she played it, I realized, oh, wait a second. I think I just run into exactly what she likes to do, which is playing tactically. And then I was like, okay, let me calculate. So of course, the first thing you look at is what happens that the bishop takes. So what I didn't realize, because I did quickly saw this, I saw see this idea quickly, and I just thought, okay, knight c4, queen goes back, e5, I'm fine. I don't care that knight e6 is a move, it's fine. But the issue is that after queen takes, she doesn't play knight c4, a discovery attack on my queen. No, she plays e5 first, an intermediate move, because now my knight has to move. So in, my, in case of knight d7, knight c4, and can you find where the queen is moving? Because I couldn't. I couldn't see where the queen is going. And basically my queen is trapped on f4 out of all squares. <laughs> so then I thought, okay, I'm in trouble. So okay, I spent a lot of time calculating and I saw knight e4 is a possible move. And after knight takes e4, what well, the funny thing is, is that there's queen takes e5 and the knight is pinned as well. <laughs> so then I saw, okay, there's queen g3. So getting out of the pin, attacking my queen. So this is forcing a trade and after bishop g6. And here I was simply not sure if my two rooks are better uh, than the rook and knight and bishop. So in case of takes, takes, I basically have a rook and pawn versus knight and bishop. So usually this is better for the side with the pieces. So the knight and bishop, that is stronger than a rook and pawn. But in this very situation, in end games, the rooks are stronger. The rooks, of course, want to be on open files. So in this case, apparently it was good enough. It was going to be fine. But I wasn't sure behind the board and I thought this is really easy to trade all the pieces down and I didn't want to take any risks here. I thought the game just started, I allowed e4, but it felt like there was more to it and I didn't want to give up just yet or I didn't want to allow this to happen. I wanted to continue fighting. So instead of going for this line, which I did see, uh, but I couldn't properly evaluate, instead of this I went for the move bishop g6. Now, as it turns out, apparently I could just play short castle and after e5 there's bishop c5 check and I'm fine. This sort of looks like some sort of French opening with the bishop out, so it's not bad at all, but it does look a bit strange. So apparently this was also fine, but okay, I played the move bishop g6, preventing e5 because now the pawn is pinned. So yeah, this uh, looks very scary because now my bishop is uh, a target, f5 will happen, then g4, and my bishop is a little stuck. I was aware of the consequences, but let's see what happened. So f5 is what she played indeed, I played bishop g3, an intermediate move, queen e3, and here I just started to collapse mentally. So. I'm ahead on the clock, I'm doing just fine, and um, well, I was playing my moves relatively quickly, especially in the opening, I was very confident, but here I was like, hold on there, what am I actually doing? So I played bishop h2 check, king h1, knight h5, and I suddenly start to realize that I'm actually in huge trouble. Um, and I didn't really know what to do with this, so rook f3, I see all of these moves, but I can't quite figure out what I'm actually going for. What do I want to do here? Is, is there any need to allow all of this? But I just couldn't figure out what the best moves were. So for the longest time, I'm calculating. I played bishop f4. You see, I spent in the last few moves, I spent 30 minutes and I could just not figure out what to do. So I played this move, queen e2, hoping that something happens, but I just don't see it. I'm simply losing my bishop, which is trapped and I just can't do anything else. So here, after a long thought, I ran down to two minutes and I was like, I don't know, <laughs> what is the best way to lose this piece? Can I somehow find the compensation anywhere? So I took on e4 and I was fully aware that after bishop takes e4, I'm simply lost. So if bishop takes f5, bishop takes f5 and my pawn on e6 is pinned. 
If I take here with the pawn, bishop takes e6, check, double check. So I'm losing a rook here. And I don't have any other move. Knight g3 does not help me at all. So the idea is, of course, to win material. So rook takes, bishop takes, but then pawn takes on a g6. And after h takes g6, what do I have? A terrible position. <laughs> so in this situation, white is just simply much better and my pawns are terrible. King is still in the center. I may castle soon, but the pieces of white are just going to develop soon and I just have a terrible position. So I knew that bishop e4 is just over. It's gg. What well, does she play almost instantly after like a minute, I think? Knight takes e4. And I was so happy. I I almost jumped out of my chair. I, I think like deep inside, I was just like, wait, what? Did I miss something? I just take the pawn. And what's next? And all of a sudden I'm doing fine. I got the pawn, my bishop is free. And I don't know, I, I got very lucky. But the only issue is guys, so this is now move 19 that I played. I have two minutes on the clock, so I'm like, why did I spend so much time? <laughs> so, I need to play 20 more moves with two minutes on the clock with all sorts of pieces still left on the board. So, I got pretty nervous already. So, she plays queen e1. Also, in this moment, she spent a lot of time, so that made me really happy because, first of all, I could sort of evaluate the position and calculate properly, sort of properly, but it gave me some time to come back and also, now that she's also on the clock, we could have a fight, an equal fight, sort of. <laughs> so I play queen e5, which is apparently not a great move at all. Um, I just thought I'm pinning the knight and I'm putting more pressure, but apparently there is g4. She did not play this, but apparently there is g4. And I, for some reason, thought that this is completely fine. I take here, bishop takes, knight g3, and I thought this is completely fine. But what I missed is that there's all sorts of tactical... Uh, opportunity. So after queen takes e4, white can just take with the bishop on f4, the rook is defending the queen now, and my knight is getting trapped. So imagine queen takes, rook takes, my knight is trapped. And I completely overlooked this. So I can move my knight, for example, to e2, but then king f2, and my knight is again trapped. And well, I, I have to give up the queen, and this is quite a disaster. So I was pretty shocked that when I came back to my room and saw this, I was shocked that this is an opportunity for um, for white. And I completely overlooked this. And what I also overlooked is that I can't take on c1 at all, even, even if I want to, just to make an intermediate move. Because of bishop takes c6 check, and my bishop is not defending the queen anymore. <laughs> so yeah, all in all, um, she didn't play this. She took an f4, luckily. And after knight takes f4, bishop c2, and okay, both of us are very low on the clock. So anything that happened after move 20 was just time pressure and a lot of things were going uh, through our minds, of course. So I finally castled on move 22, I finally finished development. <laughs> queen g3 happened, knight g6, I'm defending my queen, takes takes, rook f2, knight c4. So okay, I'm up a pawn, but still work needs to be done here. Bishop d3, I repeated moves because I thought why not. Rook d8, rook e2, a5. I tried to play practically because, well, I'm running down on the clock pretty quickly here. Knight c5, rook d5. So the interesting moment is here where I decided that, okay, I prefer to have a knight over a bishop because this knight can be a pain on c5. As soon as this knight stays on c5 with b4 played, etc., I thought I'm done for because it looks terrible to deal with and maybe at some point I have to sacrifice material or some sort. So I really wanted to trade off this knight. So after bishop takes f5, I was happy to take on c5. And um, I prefer to have the knight because I was going to push with those pawns over here at some point anyway. So the knight, I think, can find some good squares and... Um, I felt like this was good enough for me. The knight is a very tricky piece. Rook e1, knight c4, and here I went back to d6. Safe and sound, c4, rook d8, 
And yeah, if you look at the clock, so we get 30 seconds every single move, right? So if you see 34 seconds on our clocks, it means that we made the move with four seconds on the clock. <laughs> P3, knight B7. So I'm trying to get my knights to C5, which would be a really nice square. But here I decided to move my king towards the center because I started to get a bit shaky over here that, okay, my king needs to get involved. I need to uh, bring some more forces into the game. Here, apparently white had the move bishop takes h7. I did quickly glance over it, but I thought she's not going to play this because g6 and there's no way. But apparently this is, you know, it's uh, it's possible because you take so many pawns and this could be a round draw, uh, could be equal. But yeah, I did not think she would play this because it's way too risky. Why would she do this um, with 30 seconds on the clock, right? So she went back, fortunately for me. King e7, rook d3, and yeah, here I'm simply activating my pieces, king d7, rook e3, okay, little scary still because I'm allowing rook d1, so I have to go back and make sure that I don't lose a piece on the d file <laughs> uh, before it's played, and now rook e5. So here, uh, actually, a few moves ago, we reached move 40, so uh, here was a moment that I started to spend time and I got 30 minutes added to my clock. So here I played the, so she, she played bishop d3, I traded rooks, and here I took on b4, and she took with the rook, and I was really happy about this, because now uh, this pawn is not going anywhere. Whenever the pawn moves, I simply go behind the pawn, and I have a pass pawn over here that is really fast. So I played c5, just to make sure that she's not able to play c5, the bishop is stuck, so yeah, I was more than happy um, to play this, rook a4, e5, rook a7. She attacks my pawn, but I don't care because I push the pawn more, e3. I still have to be a little bit accurate here because if I make one mistake, it's suddenly draw again uh, for no reason at all. So I had to be a little bit careful here. So I play rook c3, uh, bishop e2 is what you play, I give a check. And here I play knight d4, so I want to push that pawn badly. Here she plays bishop g4, and she took on f5. Now I was like, oh, that's pretty tricky still because rook takes c5, and if I push e2, then rook e5, she takes the pawn. I would have to work really hard for the win. So I played the intermediate move g5 here. So g5 first, get the king out of there. If king takes, then I simply start pushing the pawn and nobody can stop me. So she plays the move king e4. I play uh, knight d6, I was really happy because now rook takes c4. Um, and I'm simply sacrificing well, sort of sacrificing pieces, because after rook takes, knight takes, she can't take the knight uh, because my pawn is pushing and uh, promoting. So, yeah, king d3 is what is played, king e5, g3, h5, simply uh, locking it down on the uh, queen's, uh, king side, I mean, and a4, and here I still played king d5, but it was not registered on the DGT board, funnily enough, uh, because one of the central squares where you put the kings to determine the result, but I played king d5 because I, I'm just going to collect the pawn. This king is not going anywhere, it is tied down to that pawn, and I'm not in a rush. Well, I just have to take that pawn to ensure that I'm winning. As soon as my king captures that pawn, it is over. Oh. <laughs> so, yeah, as soon as I capture the pawn, the game is over and easy to win. And that is how I won my game. I'm really happy to have won this game. It was a roller coaster. Uh, I was so happy with the opening, but then I completely messed it up and it was really difficult to come back from that, but yeah, I was really lucky that my opponent made a mistake and uh, then we were both in time trouble, so a lot of things happened, but all in all, it was a really adventurous game, really happy with the win, and with this win, um, our team won actually three and a half, two and a half. It was absolutely insane. We did not expect to win like this, especially given the circumstances that um, there were three boards on our team not looking great. So yeah, really happy with the result, really happy for the team. And as you can already guess, I'm taking a day off today. My team is playing against Georgia, the number one seed. So that is going to be a really fun matchup. The, the game's actually just started. Uh, before I end the video, I actually want to uh, go back a little bit to uh, the game that I showed you in yesterday's recap, or, or well, the last video. Um, as you remember, I was showing you this game from uh, my teammate Thea. Uh, when we played against Azerbaijan, she had one crazy opportunity in this very position. So in this position, 
uh, she had the opportunity to play um, drum roll. She had bishop g6, a crazy move. So the idea behind this move is that the queen is simply trapped on f5. So after h takes g6, h takes g6, and the queen has nowhere to go. So you have to sacrifice the queen, let's say queen takes, rook takes, bishop takes, and this is game on, especially for black. Black is completely winning, and um, had Tia won this game, we would have beaten Azerbaijan. It's actually crazy. But okay, she had little time on the clock. She was not seeing this pattern at all. It was really out of the blue that this was possible. And she played it with bishop e6 instead. She was hyper-focused on that e-file. And um, yeah, the game ended in a loss for her. It was a, her. It was a really tough loss, but she fought really hard and it was... It's just so difficult at times when you have the one opportunity available in the game after struggling for so long and you don't take that opportunity. It's always really difficult, especially to make that switch. It's really difficult. So uh, we, of course, don't blame her at all for it. But um, yeah, this goes to show that anything can happen. You're in a worse position. Don't give up. There might be some ideas around the corner that may still uh, give you some chances. So, all in all guys, I am going to head out, um, I'm going to have some rest, going to follow the games, and I'm super excited to see what my team will do against Georgia. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.